Hi, my name's Brendan. I play drums on a lot of the Abley House videos on YouTube. This is a demonstration of my Ringo Ludwig Hollywood configuration drum kit, much like the one he received from George Harrison during the White Album sessions, and he continued to use through Let It Be and All of Abbey Road. You can hear this a lot easier on our other videos pertaining to the era in which he used drums like this. I hope you enjoy. They're some of my favorite drums. Thank you. Okay, here's a walkthrough of my Ringo Starr rooftop kit. Here's my 12-inch Tom. This is Thermogloss Maple, Ludwig Hollywood. So you can see there's some extra holes. This is the 13-inch Tom. 22-inch bass drum with the fabric from Gary Astridge's website, ringosbeetlekits.com. Check it out, y'all. That is the 16 by 16 floor tom. Notice no under hoop, very specific for Ringo. It's like you just got the kit and then took it off. It's the snare drum I use a lot for early Beatles on Abley House, complete with a very specific tea towel. If you find the uh, thinner linen um, tea towels, it, it's better for the uh, Ringo sound. Anything else dampens the drums too much. Just use your ears. Here's what's under the hood. I'd say Ludwig Standard Jazz Festival 5x14. Not exactly what Ringo used, but it does sound just like his. His was a 5.5. I think he went back to it around the White Album sessions. From another snare, which is in a different movie, post later. These are the hi hats I use. There are 14 inch Peisty 602. Sound Edge, they're the reissue. Again, not exactly what Ringo used, but it's all about the sound here on Abley House, right? And uh, I do have a pair of 14-inch Zildjian's, but those are in LA. I do use both on numerous Abley House videos. So Ringo's symbol here is a Peisty 602 medium ride. This is again a reissue. You can buy either of these at Guitar Center, most likely. Here's a back view of the drums. I always try to use the thinnest heads possible. The original Ludwig Tom Tom heads are very hard to find. You can find them. Usually I like to use Diplomat. And then on the kick, I've been using this original Ludwig white calf, calf skin head. 22 inch. Uh, Ringo actually didn't use, a lot of people think he switched to calf skin heads right away, but Let It Be sessions uh, show otherwise. Uh, when he was playing with B.B. King, you can see the, the switch to calf skin. This symbol right here is a Zin with five rivets set up like a pentagon. These are cheap British-made symbols that came with kits. You can hear this symbol all over Sgt. Pepper's album and then back for Abbey Road and Let It Be sessions. It's the main crash you hear on Like Here Comes the Sun, uh, numerous songs. Maxwell Silver Hammer, you can hear it really well. Uh, with a little help from my friends, can't forget that one. There it is, a Zine, Zin, made in England. Very cheap symbol, you can find those for like 20 bucks. Okay, this is my personal favorite symbol. I use this, it sounds just like Ringo's. You can hear it on the Get Back Abley House as a 19 inch Armand Zildjian made in the early 2000s. I took the rivets out, it sounds very good. I use it a lot on uh, Abley House videos. It's just a quick run through. I'm missing a little hardware here and there, but overall this kit sounds great. Sounds like Ringo's. If you have any other questions about some of the gear I use, I do keep a uh, Zildjian CIE handy because on Abbey Road you can hear um, this one's a little tattered, but I like them that way. You can hear another symbol all over Abbey Road album that doesn't sound like any of the symbols I have in this rooftop configuration. So okay, thanks y'all.
So now that we know what drums were used in our videos, as well as a kit similar to Ringo's Let It Be, Rooftop, Abbey Road, White Album drums, begs the question, why did he use this? Why did he add another tom? Why did he add another cymbal? I think Ringo was always experimenting. He was also tuning his toms. Remember with those very thin drum heads that just came on them? And the muffling techniques used as well as how the bottom drum hoops are off of the bass drum as well as the floor tom. Those are techniques they were doing since uh, Revolver at least, moving the mics closer, a more deader, drier sound. And basically the amount of tea towel usage has been over-examined, I would say, since people started talking about it or caring. His toms weren't as muted all the time. Extreme examples of tea towel toms, like come together, things like that. So he used drum, drums and cymbals like this through Plastic Ono Band, All Things Must Pass, the Nielsen recordings, as well as BB King, which is previously mentioned. So the overhead on Abbey Road, I just so happen to be holding the AKG D19. This is part of the magic, the mono overhead drums. Uh, some of our other videos can detail more of the uh, miking techniques and studio magic that the Beatles used, especially in the red boards and things like that. So Ringo always teetowled his snare drum towards the end of their career. He preferred the deader uh, sound dry and crisp, which is exactly how Abbey Road sounds. If you have any other questions on why he used what he used, you might have to ask Ringo if he can remember. I'm just using my best judgment and the amount of experimenting that those guys did show. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any other questions about why he used these three-ply maple Ludwig drums, they always sounded great, so that's definitely a good start. Thank you.